so today we got something a little bit different looking than normal. seen us run marine exhaust manifolds, um, Imco, we also run some of uh, the Seaward series, uh, the Cyclone headers, a lot of different ones, but these Imco power flows, and this is a short tailpipe, this is actually a tailpipe for a captain's choice exhaust. So if you guys don't know what that is, basically about from here to here, there's a T put in and there's a flapper valve. So what it allows you to do is send the exhaust straight out the transom and make it sound mean, or you can have it go, like the flap will close this off and there would be a pipe that would go down and out the bottom of the transom actually through the drive unit. So all of the exhaust is underneath the water, it's a little quieter cruising around. So if you're leaving the marina, obviously a guy wants to turn Captain, Captain Choice exhaust on, it's out the, the back of the transom sounded nasty. Um, so something that we were focused on, we had already done a video, we'd actually previously ran this, and when I seen the tailpipes, I was a little bit concerned. When you get into the marine exhaust, you're gonna hear a lot of scuttlebutt about the motor sucking up water, or don't put too much camshaft, meaning too much duration, or too much overlap. Um, believe it or not, these manifolds, when you look them up, they say they support 400 or 450 horsepower. So being me, I question everything. Um, why is that? Like I'm a little concerned. I built 500 horsepower 396 for this customer. He's got a 2008 Checkmate, um, pretty basic boat, and a nice boat. Wants to have a fairly decent power plant. I really, I think his goal is 500 horsepower. Um, really though, I think it was more like 65. 66 mile an hour uh, type of you know wide open going down the lake which quite frankly I, I think he'll be over 70 easy um, but I don't want to take a 500 horsepower motor which we validated with a long tube header we've got a bunch of them in here and then bolt the Imco Marine on and drop power we've kind of validated that in, in the past that they didn't drop a lot of power but I had a lot longer tailpipe. In this case it's short because the captain's call exhaust or cap captain's choice. What's concerning is it's dumping the water about here, meaning it's jacketed, everything's jacketed, gets to here and then the water enters the exhaust stream. So when they talk about motor eating water or reversion, when that water drops into the pipe, it has a tendency to want to back up and go inside the motor. So the 450 rating comes from like a stock small block Chevy. 220 to 230 duration camshaft maximum, and they feel like, you know, small block Chevy with maybe a decent cylinder head uh, would make 450 horsepower. They don't, they leave a lot of cushion there. And there's a lot of, again, I couldn't answer any of this. So anyway, this engine, I'd have to go pull the build sheet. Um, in fact, I'm going to kind of keep it a little proprietary information for us. As far as how much duration, what's the lobe separation, I can tell you that. We're on 113. Uh, duration numbers are, are a fair amount higher than Imco or Harden suggests. And, and because the tailpipe is so short, we took the time and money 
to install this site plug right here. This is actually rated for 1600 degrees, but it gives us a bird's eye view of what's going on in this tailpipe. Is it sucking water back? What's going on? Um, obviously, it's nice to see that when it's running and chugging down at idle at 700 RPM. That's probably when it's going to be the worst. Um, so, initial startup, we noticed uh, a little bit of, of condensation forming. Very little. And you can probably see that in the little video clip. Um, but, it wasn't a lot. So, we pulled the, the plug out and it only makes sense, scientifically, you've got a jacketed cold water this is coming especially too this is coming out of the ground so it's 55 degrees and the inside of the pipe is whatever the exhaust temp is let's just say that's i don't know 500 700 degrees major change in temperature it's going to build condensation so the little bit that we've seen once we pulled this out we're looking in there there's no visible water been sucked into the manifold and the tailpipe is sweating a little bit which is expected so the fact that we see it, the water droplets moving through the sight glass, well, that's some of the exhaust pulses that you're viewing, but the little bit of moisture is just moisture content that's going to be created in a marine exhaust system regardless of what you do. Um, so that also leads me to why the oxygen sensors in any marine application, for the most part, do not last. Even if we're jacketed all the way clear, we could have 10 foot pipe out the back of the transom. It's still going to condensate internally because you've got cold water against a hot surface. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, so pleasantly surprised, a lot more duration, and if you look at the numbers, I think we made like 505 with our long tubes made like 470 foot-pounds of torque-ish and we pulled these on, we lost torque which makes sense because this is a really short runner now uh, as far as exhaust instead of a long tube and then you know the riser and tailpipe we only lost 10 horsepower not even, maybe 5 to 10 horsepower and about 20 foot-pounds of torque that's pretty impressive that tells me that this exhaust system works really really well um, we have very minimal to no uh, reversion effect. We have some uh, moisture, which is expected. And again, why the oxygen sensors don't last. So when you buy and purchase an engine from us at Prestige, we're testing it exactly the way it's going to be in the boat. Minus the fact it doesn't have front pulleys on it, I think he's got his own stuff. We've ran it, we've baselined, we have a map for the fuel injection, and we've ran it with his exhaust system and what this allows us to do is get our tune-up really, really close. The guy puts it on the earmuffs and fires it up in his driveway. We'll remote in, make sure everything's okay. He's happy. Take it to the lake, drop it in the water, make a run, make a couple runs, come back. We'll review the data. Once that's done, we'll transfer any of that learning to the base map, and we're going to close or turn the closed loop off. It'll be an open loop. We'll remove the oxygen sensor and just take it out of the system. This is the lengths we go to to ensure your satisfaction with the product in the vessel and hauling ass down the lake. For more information, watch more of our tech videos.